I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Okay, this uh, video response is to Empty Without Jesus, and it's specifically responding to a portion of his video, your video, called Darwin Crushed Part 2. Um, now, I want to, um, I wasn't going to make another video today, but I was just kind of searching through, you know, I always look, look through YouTube and see if there's anything exciting and new out there, and sometimes I find an older video that passed me by. And I found your video series, uh, Darwin is Darwin Crushed, um, which I'm not going to make a response to your se the series. I'm not even I'm responding specifically to a single point. But I do want to say this: you need to leave your comfort zone and actually research. You just I, I saw in one of your responses somebody challenged you to read Darwin, and you said you didn't have to read Darwin's fairy tale to know that it's wrong. Well, okay, fine. Don't read Darwin. Although it, it, it is academically dishonest to be quoting Darwin if you haven't read Darwin. Um, but that's that's an aside. Read other. There's some really good... Talk Origins has some good articles. Um, other places online. Or there's a lot of even books that are... That explain these concepts in simple terms. Because it's very, very clear you don't understand the first thing about evolution. Um, just from your comments on why what evidences you have against it and what you would expect to see in the fossil record shows me that you don't know anything about how it really is supposed to work. Um, you're getting your information from a limited number of creationist websites and they are deceiving you. Okay, I believe you are sincere. I think you honestly believe what you say, but you're being, you know, you can, you know, you can keep your religion, you can keep your beliefs, but know the facts about what you're saying before. I mean, it, it's unfortunate. I hate to see it. Okay. Um, now, what I want to specifically address address in this is your um, you said and and part two it was right around actually three sixteen three minutes sixteen seconds not John, um, but it was right before that you talk about punctuated equilibria, um, and. Well, that's what kind of nailed it. Normally, I, your rest of your video series, I watched it and I just said, eh, same old stuff, obvious, you know, poor guy. I felt sorry for you. And I w but I would have never, not really made a res video response to it. But then you started talking about Gould, and I'm not, I'm not even a Gould fan, um, especially. Um, I'm, you know, I'm simply not. You know, I, I disagree with a lot of what Gould has written, um, especially when he waxes into o opinions as opposed to science. Um, but that's that's that has nothing to do with it. What I want to talk about with punctuated equilibrium is you um, you outright you you make stuff up here, okay? Um, it, it's called lying, okay? And I hate I'm not using the word lightly. You make the claim that Gould. What is it you state about your... I, I don't remember all the words. I'm not going to put the actual thing in here. But you make the claim that Gould came up with punctuated equilibria um, because the fossil record showed no evidence of transitionals. And so rather than becoming a creationist, the logical path, he clung to his atheist beliefs and became, you know, made up a new theory with no evidence behind it. And that we're supposed to believe him because he's a Harvard paleontologist. Okay, now you need to understand how fundamentally insulting that is to, not just to Gould, um, who's passed away, by the way. If you, I don't know if you knew that or not. I'd, I'd be surprised if you did. Um, but insulting to all of us that, that are working scientists, okay? It's... It, unbelievable uh, it, the ignorance it shows about how science works is, is is one thing but you're actually that accusation if that accusation were leveled at somebody in academia working in academia honestly leveled at them like by one of their colleagues um that's an issue that's a that's a lawsuit that's losing your career and all your scientific credibility all right if that's what really happened it turns out you're wrong about it, completely wrong about it. I'm going to put a link up in the sidebar. Um, 
punctuated equilibria. First of all, I want to make this little statement here too, because it's clear that you've never actually read the paper. You haven't read either of the of Gould and Eldridge's paper, Eldridge and Gould's papers, on the subject. Okay, you're citing from a lying creationist source. You probably don't know that it's lying. Okay, again, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you're just repeating what somebody else has already said and you don't bother to look it up yourself. Okay, punctuated equilibrium. In the first paper, it's a uh, uh, on the mode and tempo of what is it called? Uh, no, that's that's the second paper. Hold on, I, I actually have, I have both of their papers here. Um, I'll put a link up so you can you can read full text online. Punctuated equilibria: an alternative to phyletic gradualism is the first paper, and their seventy-seven paper is uh, punctuated equilibria: the tempo and mode of evolution reconsidered. Okay, this. Okay, oh god, I don't even know where to begin on this. This is so frustrating. Um it the first paper is 34 pages long. Okay? It's not a huge paper, but it's a big paper. And I'd say probably 80 plus 90% of that paper is evidence for punctuated equilibria, okay? Based on and you may not know this, okay? I'm going to say this, it was insulting your um when you make the claim about a Harvard paleontologist, so we're supposed to believe him. No, we're supposed to believe him because we can examine the evidence that he provides. We can read rebuttals to his paper by other scientists that don't agree. We can read his response to their rebuttals. It's peer review. It's looking at the scientific literature, and we see if it's rejected or not. It turns out that, there's again, their 71 paper was chock full of evidence based on Syrian snails and... um and facops and trilobites filled with evidence about that. I mean, their life's research put into this paper, okay, that in, in, a, in, a, in a, maybe oversimplification. But what they actually studied in the real world was presented as evidence for punctuated equilibria in that paper. It's not without evidence. I mean, I can't even imagine the hubris for you to make that statement. Um, I know it's born out of ignorance. Their 77 paper provided even more evidence based on fossil mammals. Okay? You need, okay, here's what you need to do. And I know you're not going to do it, and if you did do it, you'd be the first in history. You need to put a video up where you apologize um, posthumously to, to Gould. Um, but apologize to them for making the claim you did because it's fraudulent. It's wrong. Um, read their paper. Re- read their paper. And I'm going to tell you this. The first thing, their punctuated equilibria, I'm going to state this outright because you don't know this. Punctuated equilibria is about microevolution, what you would call microevolution. There really isn't a, a true distinction in science. Okay? It's talking about the change between closely related species as species... Um, sympatrically and allopatrically speciate closely related groups and the rate of change that accumulates in those groups, okay? It's not about amphibians turning into reptiles or reptiles turning into birds or mammals, okay? It's not about big gaps in the fossil record between between major taxa. We have those things. Those are filled in, okay? We have missing links between major taxa. We lack a lot of missing links between closely related species, okay? So you guys, most of you that I've ever spoken to, young Earth creationists, have no argument with microevolution. You don't argue that coyotes, wolves, and dogs, and maybe foxes all had a common ancestor. Okay, Gould is talking about how fast those species appeared from the common ancestor. Okay, it has, it, it's completely in agreement with what you guys believe in. Um, punctuated equilibrium has nothing to do with it. Gould admits in his first paper, admits, he states in his first paper that we have abundant examples of transitional fossils between major taxa. What we lack are these closely related, between the different species of closely related snails that he studied. We don't have, we don't see a gradual transition from one species into another. We see one species abruptly stop and another, you know, slightly different species, but still closely related, seems to seems to suddenly appear. Okay, that is what punctuated equilibrium is about. And I challenge you to read these papers, okay, and then post your apology. All right, take care.